Good morning. It is morning for me. <laughs> it may be a different time for you. I'm Richard Phobes, the Bald Explorer, on another walk on the South Downs again. I'm spending a lot of time on the South Downs at the moment, particularly on the uh, east side of the River Ada. And that's uh, mainly because I'm reading as much as I can about it. And when you read about a place, you want to go and look at it. So on this walk, very similar start to when I did uh, fairly recently. I started here, parked back at High Trees, I think, the car park, passing these sheep that I pass and climbing up this hill. The last walk, which is close to Upper Beading, I went round on the, the north side of the hill and climbing up here, hoping to catch up with the Monarch's Way and then heading down to Thunder's Barrow Hill where there is an Iron Age and Bronze Age um, well, hill fort, camp, um, earth works, that sort of thing. So this is on the South Downs Way where I start and behind me here is Shoreham we can see and Lansing College on the on the uh, top of the crest there and just over there is the um, I, I think I don't know if it was Blue Circle but the cement people is just over there and I'm heading up to the path which will join the Monarch's Way so South Downs Way Monarch's Way I'm indebted to one of my viewers, Dave, because um, I'm often waxing lyrical about uh, the South Downs sheep, or the sheep on the South Downs, not necessarily the South Downs variety. And I um, like to see them on the Downs, traditionally where they should be at the top, doing the grazing. But Dave tells me in a comment on my previous video that the due to a, not due but um, an agricultural report that he found says that the the uh, worth of their meat has dropped quite dramatically over the last 10 20 years or whatever and consequently they're not so intensively farmed as they once were now that's a shame because I thought well certainly traditionally sheep meat was low on the reason for having them it was their fleeces and i i wonder if the old british sheep wool is still the best in the world and sought after as much as it ever was i'd be interesting to know if anybody knows that no doubt with artificial and other countries farming sheep perhaps we're not as uniquely positioned as we once was right shall leave this get onto the Monarch's Way, which is just over there. So, on we go. So, here we see the Monarch's Way sign, the Bridle Way sign that is a little bit rocky. The road that cuts across on the top of this, which comes from Windmill Hill, is that way. Uh, and that's, you can get down to Shoreham that way. It's an old route. I imagine that's a very old route that comes across here, but, I'm getting onto the path here, which is the um, Monarch's Way, through a gate. Like so. Uh, and I'd just like to say hello also to, um, I think it was Dave and family, who caught me the other day, on Father's Day it was. I was sitting outside um, my house, just reading actually a book by Dave Bangs, which is a book about the South Downs on this particular stretch. And I was reading and they came up to me and said, oh, hi, Richard, you don't know us. We watch your videos, we love them, and they inspire you to take us out on walks, which was really nice, really nice to meet people who, who find these walks really helpful. It's just, do you know, it sometimes, it reassures me that um, 
I'm doing something positive and and worthwhile and not just engaged in a uh, well what would you say a personal bit of fun for myself that actually is useful for people which is rather nice anyway I'm gonna carry on now but uh, yeah that was lovely so hello to you guys Good morning, lovely to see you. Always good to see horses traveling along on these tracks. We've got some sheep here, I don't suppose I can get close to them at all. Some, some little baby sheep, let's see. No, no, very frightened. I'm a great fan of sheep. I think you may have guessed that. I think they're just historically wonderful and important creatures that perhaps, I mean, they may be a bit stupid, but they've been so valuable to us. Ahead of me, I can see Thunderbarra Hill. I can see the pathway leading up to it in the distance there, which I guess is another couple of miles it's about a four mile, well, actually, uh, I think the whole thing is about two miles to there and then obviously two miles back. So yeah, so perhaps that's a mile and a half. I don't know, I, I may have done a mile. Sometimes very difficult to sort of gauge when you're going up and down hills and weaving and stuff. But uh, it's beautiful. There is another walk back, which curves around there. I may do that, depends how I feel, um, as a secondary walk, which will go um, to complement this, or I may do that on another occasion. <laughs> there is an abundance of wildflowers, grasses, plants in these borders here. Stretching right back up there. And of course, it's fantastic to see some of them incredibly delicate, some of them quite robust but it gives you an indication of the sort of grasses and plants that would have been everywhere. And, you know, if you let these pastures grow, um, they're still there. It's great to see as I get further and further into the heart of the downs here, away from the roads, that this is all pasture land and it's not crops. You, you get that sense of stepping back into time. Now, very soon, once I get up onto the hill in front of me, I will get onto a, a pathway which goes north and south. And this is an old, gro uh, an old drove road. And I was reading in Dave Bang's book, which I thoroughly recommend, by the way, how Back in the Saxon period and, and possibly before, people at Kingston Boosie, where I was on one of my recent videos, and this was happening all along the stretch of the downs, would drive their swines, their pigs, over the downs and down into the weald. And various uh, settlements had areas of land which was associated with them, forests, woodland, that sort of thing. Um, further up, almost right up to Surrey and the North Downs, different patches of ground that they would take them up there so that they could in the autumn feed on the mast, the acorns, um, the fungus and all of that fattening them up for the winter which they obviously needed to get them through for, as a food resource, the people not the pigs, the pigs unfortunately were going to be slaughtered and then probably um, kept in salt to preserve them. An abandoned tractor tire here at what, what looks like a baling yard and guessing for storing hay and silage perhaps in this area. It looks like it's seen better days than when it was built but uh, probably still in use at certain times of the year when the certain parts of the land is is let to go for 
four grasses for silage, I imagine. So we're right up at the top, and I mentioned it's nice to uh, see the pasture, but of course here we have a field of crop, and everyone's been telling me that barley or oats have a, a beard and one doesn't. I don't really know what they mean by when it says it's got a beard. I mean, it's got spiky hair going up. I don't know if that's what they mean. So I can't tell you what that is without looking that up, which of course I failed to do. But we are now on the path which goes north-south. This is a very ancient pathway. Um, it, it actually becomes the Monarch's Way as far as modern day times is. But this is the ancient pathway you'd go up here uh, with your swine herd across the downs, down the other side. And on the north side you'll see a sort of zigzag of deep troughs, you know, and um, I've often wondered if that was the water making that when the ice melted from, or the snow melted here, but no, I believe now it's the, it's the years and years of herding animals down those paths to the north on the other side of Truly Hill, which is just behind me. But ahead of me, very exciting now, down this route, this old uh, drove track, Thunder Barrow Hill, and uh, we'll see what we see when we get there. I have arrived, and I'm on the top of Thunder Barrow Hill with this incredibly majestic sweeping landscape around me, 360 degree view. A couple of people behind me, I just passed them, I waited for them to go walking. This is so peaceful and so beautiful. One of the women there, I guess in her 60s, oh there's a runner coming now, you see people, I always go out early to try and avoid people, but she had a f radio attached to her, blaring out Radio 2 as she walked along in this incredibly beautiful, tranquil environment. I just, you know, can't quite comprehend that. You can be in different parts of the countries, in cities, in London, say, in the suburbs, other cities, and feel when you find historic places that you, you're you there with, with a bit of nature. But let me tell you, when you're up on the South Downs, you don't have the sound of the cars. You might have a bit of wind. You feel like you're now actually stepping back in time, it, you know, you can be in an ancient building in a city, but if there's road and there's modern people, you, can, you can't really suspend belief quite so much. But here where you're surrounded by the grass and all of this, you just certainly can. I don't know where the ramparts are. They've, I mean, I must be within them here. And I'm just on a little path that goes round some hawthorn trees. I think a little cut path. I don't think it really serves much of a purpose, but this must be the, the camp. And I say that because it feels like it's been left. And presumably this is a scheduled site. I'm not going to go any further. I've got shorts on and uh, there's stinging nettles here. But I'm guessing, I'm guessing that this is, this is it. Anyway, I'm going to rest a moment here and just breathe in the atmosphere of this incredible place, this wonderful landscape. Try and erase the blaring jingles that were coming from Radio 2 a few moments ago. And thank you so much for watching. Take care, look after yourself and join me on another walk. And if you've enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Become a patron and support what I do, a couple of quid every month really helps me get out and about and put petrol in the car etc and i'll see you on the next one bye bye